In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to hack your Super Nintendo Classic or your Nintendo Classic in 2020. This is Steve from Nostalgia, and let's get started. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, please consider going down below the video and subscribing. It would be greatly appreciated. Now, this video is going to show you guys how to mod your SNES Classic or your NES Classic. And the reason I'm putting out this video is one, because I've never done a mod video for the Super Nintendo or Nintendo Classic consoles. But Nintendo has actually just released a few refurbished NES Classics or SNES Classics, depending on which one you're interested in. $49.99 for the NES Classic, $69.99 for the SNES Classic, available directly on the Nintendo website. Now keep in mind these are refurbished units, but if you're going to be modding them anyways, I don't really think that that's going to be much of a problem. So now that they are a little bit more available publicly, and I don't know how many units they actually have available, so keep in mind if you want them, go grab them, link in the description before they're sold out. Uh, I just figured I would go ahead and show you guys how to mod these things and get them up and running. Now for this mod, we are going to go ahead and use the Hack Chi 2 mod, and that is going to be the main mod, and in fact it is by far the best mod, and really the only mod that's available for the Super Nintendo and the NES Classic. Keep in mind that Hack Chi 2 can also be used to mod the Sega Genesis Mini, but for this video our focus is going to be on the Super Nintendo and the Nintendo Classic. Classic. So jumping into that tutorial, the first thing that we need to do is hop on over to GitHub and grab the Team Shinkaisen Hakchi 2 mod. I will leave the links as I mentioned down below in the description, but when you get to this page you're going to have a few different options here and I did want to talk about it because there's been some questions that have come my way. Should I download the release zip? Should I get the installer? Should I get the debug? And I'll just explain to you really quickly what the difference is. The release zip is going to be almost like a portable version of Hackchi. You don't need to install it on any specific computer. You go ahead and download the zip, you extract it, and it'll have an application that you double click and launch and it'll run right away. The installer is exactly what it sounds like. It's an actual application installer that you're going to install directly to your Windows machine, and you're gonna have that live on your computer that way. And then the last version is our debug mode. Same sort of system, except this allows the developers, as well as you, to get a good idea of what's actually happening at any given time. All the code that's going on on the mod will actually be displayed in a separate window, and that's gonna be very helpful in the event that you need any sort of support or you run into errors and the developers are trying to troubleshoot where the problem is. Now, for the purposes of this video, it is always recommended to get the installer version you want to install the actual application. So we go ahead and click on that file. We're gonna save it directly to our desktop. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. We're gonna minimize that. It's not a very big file, so it shouldn't take very long. And there it is right here. Now we're gonna go ahead and install it. Pretty quick process, double click on the application. Next, we're gonna have our installation options display. And again, we just have to select what we want. I like to always uh, create a desktop shortcut for any of these types of applications that I use frequently. Now you don't have to do that, but I do recommend it if it's something that you're gonna be playing around with quite a bit. Obviously we have the option to do the release build, that's what we want, but it also gives us the option here to get the debug build. Uh, I'm not gonna use the debug build, I think I'm pretty good with the way it is. And then we just have to hit the next button. It's gonna ask us where we wanna save it, only takes about 80 megabytes, we're gonna install and just let it do its thing. So now that it's done, it's not actually gonna disappear in terms of the window. You're gonna see up on the top it says completed, as well as in the uh, in the coding section where it actually displays every step that it's uh, taken, it will say that it's completed as well. You just need to hit the close button and you're more or less done actually. So if you take a peek on the desktop, I'm just gonna drag it over. We now have a new icon for Hackchi 2 SE and this installer we no longer need. We can go ahead and throw that in the recycle bin. What we want to do is now open up Hackchi 2 and uh, it's gonna give us a couple prompts and probably download a little bit uh, of information from their servers, but it doesn't take very long at all. Now it's going to say it's going to restore original games, and this is something that I wanted to talk about uh, right away. Uh, if you are using Hackchi, and for whatever reason there was some sort of an interruption where it was not able to actually download those original games, we can correct that, and I'm gonna show you guys how to do that in a second. So, this is just gonna give you an important message. Keep in mind if you're modding Sega Mini, you can't use the included USB, it doesn't have data lines, it's not compatible uh, with the Super Nintendo 
though in the NES Classic, you're fine. The USB cables that came with it did have data lines, so you're good that way. Obviously, any sort of support, you're going to need to access it through the Rock and the Classics Discord. They've got links directly where you can access it through HackG, but I always leave links to their Discord in my description as well. And other than that, you're going to go ahead and hit OK. Like I said, if you run into a problem where those original games did not populate, all you need to do is go to File restore original games and it'll do the same process it'll go and locate those games download them and then you're going to have them and they should be there for every single console so if you jump over to the sega genesis those games should all be there obviously the us version is going to be what's checked off and if you go over to the nes same thing you're going to have access to those games like i said we are using the super nintendo classic so we need to make sure that that is the game selection that is selected now that's more or less it in terms of getting the application installed on your computer. What we still need to do is install a custom kernel to the Super Nintendo Classic, NES Classic, whatever it is you're using. And all you're gonna need is that USB cable that we had previously talked about. We're gonna go over to kernel and we're going to install slash repair. And it's going to say, hey, do you want to install the custom kernel? The answer to that of course is yes. And what we're gonna see on screen is a prompt to tell you how to get your device into a mode called FEL mode that essentially allows you to install that custom kernel in order to mod it. Now, the way that you do it is quite simple. Make sure that there is no USB cable plugged into the console. You're gonna go ahead and hit the power switch into the on position. And then you are also gonna hold the reset button up while you connect the USB cable into the system. And you're gonna leave that held up until you get notified on screen that it has entered FEL mode and it's beginning to install that new kernel. And you're gonna see that right away, as soon as you get to a screen like this, you're gonna be able to release the reset key and it'll just go ahead and install. Now this process will take about five or six minutes. Keep in mind, we are also going to be prompted that the console is going to reboot probably two or three times during this process. And when it's all done, we are gonna get notified on screen. The Hackchi mod has been installed and we're good to start adding games. All right, so as I said, we now have a notice on screen that says done. You can upload games to your mini now, and all we're going to do is hit OK. Now, there's a few different ways that we can load games on, as well as a few different types of games that we can load on. So obviously, we've got the ability to load additional Super Nintendo games onto the SNES Classic. Now, we can do that in one of two ways. We can either load that directly onto the internal memory of the console, or the way that I actually recommend doing it and the way that I like to do it is exporting to a USB and connecting that USB drive in via an OTG adapter in the back of the console. I just find that it's cleaner, plus you can load substantially more and you're not limited by about the 250 megabytes of available internal space on the console. Now, if we're only going to be loading up Super Nintendo games, there's actually not any additional steps that we need to take other than adding the games themselves. So if we go ahead and click add more games, then we can go ahead and locate our Super Nintendo folder, and I'm obviously already pre-located to that folder. I'm going to go ahead and select one of the titles, Adventures of Batman and Robin. We're going to hit open, and what you're going to notice is it'll start to process that game and import it into our list of games that are going to be located on the left-hand side. As you can see, we now have a new apps feature, and it does say the Adventures of Batman and Robin. And as you can see, it not only took the game in, but it pre-scraped everything. It gave us all the metadata and we have appropriate artwork. So that's a nice feature that this new version of HackG has. You pretty much drag your game in and it's gonna try to scrape all the metadata, artwork, etc. One thing to note is that the games that you load on here are going to be running off of the stock emulator. So that is where I was gonna talk about additional features, additional games. If you wanted to load something like an NES game or you wanted to load Sega Genesis or one of the other consoles, you're going to need to go and install some of the modules in order to get those games to launch. And what you would do is go to your modules tab. You're gonna to go to the KMFD mods hub. That's gonna automatically open up and we're gonna have a whole bunch of different options. We've got BIOS, we've got cheats, we've got the KMFD cores, we've got RetroArch. RetroArch's where we'd wanna go. We need to select one of the versions of RetroArch that we want. We're gonna go ahead and download and install the modules. Once you've gone ahead and done that, you need to go back into here and you need to download the appropriate core. 
Everything's gonna be labeled by console, so it's very easy to identify what you need. If you want something specifically for Nintendo, you're gonna to go to the end section, and then you just need to find the console you want, Nintendo 64, Nintendo DS, NES. You pick the uh, core specifically that you want to use, and then you would go ahead and, again, download and install the module. This tutorial is gonna be mainly focused on Super Nintendo titles, but if you wanted to do other consoles, that's exactly how you would do it. And the other way to load games on here is potentially a little bit faster, Hackchi does allow you to do a drag and drop system, so you just need to locate all of your ROM files. I've got mine here. If you wanted to select maybe three or four ROMs, I'm going to go ahead and grab a couple. Now, I've gone ahead and selected six titles here real quick. All you need to do is just grab them, drag them, and drop them in. We can minimize our uh, ROM folder, and it's going to go ahead and process those games and dump them in. Once they are in, we just want to verify that the artwork has been scraped properly. And as you can see, Captain America and the Avengers is good. Disney's Aladdin, The Lion King, Mighty Morphin, Power Rangers, NBA Jam, and Spider-Man Separation Anxiety. Everything looks really good. We're more or less ready to go. Once we've decided what games we wanna load up onto it, all that we need to do is export it to a USB drive or directly to the onboard memory of the console. If you want to export directly to the onboard memory, you would just hit this synchronize selected games with mini. If you want to export to USB, that's all you need to do is select this, and then it's gonna give you the option to choose a USB drive, and then you can export it that way. Before we do that though, if you're somebody like me who's going to load a ton of games onto your console, you probably want some sort of a folder system or some sort of filtering system. The way that you would do that is you'd go into structure and what this allows you to do is adjust how those games get dumped onto the console or into a USB drive. Currently, it's gonna be by default when you install it out of the gate, two original games are gonna go directly into the root. And what that means is that it's going to automatically just be displayed along the main screen and there's no filtering. It's just gonna be everything displayed in alphabetical order. The next option is to go into custom. And if you use custom, this allows you to create folders and things like that. Now, I'm not going to go ahead and create folders, but I will show you what that looks like really quickly. So if you go into custom, you've now selected that we wanna do a custom structure. If you wanna go in and actually design your custom structure out of the gate, you can go ahead and just click on this a second time and it's going to open up uh, the folder manager, which essentially says, hey, we've got all of your games located right here. And as you can see, we've got some of the new ones that I included like NBA Jam, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, things like that. But it's all gonna be located on your home menu. If you wanted to go ahead and create folders, you can actually do it right over here. So you can split things equally. So let's say you have 20 games and you wanna split them equally between X number of folders, you can go ahead and select that option. You can also split by first letter and that's typically going to be the best way to go uh, simply because if you have a ton of Super Nintendo games, you just wanna be able to filter through alphabetically. And the last option for filtering is by filtering by console and that's going to give you the option if you have more than one console on here then you can filter obviously that way. You can actually create custom filtering and all you would do is just create a new folder. Once you create the new folder, you would label it whatever you want. And then from there, you would just drag and drop whatever games you want into that folder in there and that's where they will display. Once you create that new folder, if you click on it, you can actually go ahead and adjust what that menu icon is. So once you select it, you've got a few different options. These aren't super advanced in terms of what they are, in terms of their graphics, but they do give you quite a few different options. So if you are looking at different consoles or if you need it alphabetically, whatever it happens to be, you can kind of make those adjustments yourself. Now, I don't actually want that. I'm gonna leave everything right on the main menu. And uh, all that's really left for us to do is hit okay. Next, we go ahead and select export to USB. Once we do that, it's gonna say, hey, where do you wanna export it? I have a pre-formatted USB drive called HackG. I'm gonna go ahead and select that. I'm gonna hit okay. And it's gonna take me back into my folder manager saying, hey, are you sure this is the structure you want it to be like? If you are happy with it, you can go ahead and hit okay. And then it's gonna go ahead and start copying all of that information over to my USB drive. Now it doesn't take very long because I only added a few extra games. Obviously, if you're gonna be loading 100 or 200 or 300 extra games or the entire library of games, it's gonna take a bit longer. But once it's done, first you're gonna get noticed on screen saying, hey, export to USB is done, we can hit okay. But additionally, your USB drive should reopen and it should show you that those games are loaded up. Now, obviously it's gonna take me to a screen 000, which is gonna be your home screen. When you click on that, all your games will be displayed in here under the proper structures that are needed for Hackshi to read them. 
but you're more or less good to go. What's left here is to take the USB drive out of the computer, plug it into the Super Nintendo Classic, and go ahead and get it launched. If you are trying to synchronize directly to your console, you don't actually need to do any of that. You just need to go ahead and turn your console off and then back on, and those games should be visible that way. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to the Super Nintendo Classic now. Okay, so here we are sitting on the Super Nintendo Classic main screen right out of the gate because things are in alphabetical order we're going to see a couple of the new titles the adventures of batman and robin obviously front and center here and uh we've got our captain america we've got aladdin all of our games should populate as well as any of the internal games as well now you can choose to hide those stock internal games from your build if you want uh, it's really up to you if you want to do that. That might be useful if you are just drag and dropping an entire library into Hackchi and you don't want to have to worry about deleting any of the duplicates. Uh, it just, it's entirely up to you on how you want to do your build. Now I do want to show you that the games do work. So I'm going to go ahead and launch NBA Jam uh, and I'm going to just show you guys that the game does operate and run properly and the game can be played with no problems at all. And there you guys have it. That is how you are going to set up Hack G for your Super Nintendo or Nintendo Classic. Just a reminder, those refurbished units, it doesn't tell us how many there are. There may be very limited supply. So if you haven't picked up a Super Nintendo or NES Classic and you've been waiting for a good deal, this is a pretty good way to get one, even though it is refurbished. But that's more or less all I've got for you guys in this video. Thank you so very much for watching. Please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. Give the video a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you didn't like it. But that's more or less it. And I'll talk to you guys again real soon.